what's going on everybody this is john jake gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the gore pirates dynasty here on the oklahoma high school football mod and also here on ncaa 14 here we are in year number one we are one win away from at least considering uh like clenching that at least 500 season which is a good start for this series considering we are just with your number one in this program we are going to throw down against some really tough opponents here in the next few weeks one of those games is the number four team in the state of oklahoma the rams of olasso and this team is absolutely legit a pluses across the board they also have the number two offense in the state averaging 41 points a game they also have a top five offense in terms of yards and they have a top 10 defense in terms of rushing yards around so this team needless to say is legit they are fighting not only for a 4a sectional championship but also a state championship in general and if we want to have any chance of pulling it off against this 99 overall squad we are going to have to slow out down this game, have those methodical possessions, and make sure that we come away with points. Because I guarantee you, no matter what we do offensively, it's going to be a shootout in this one. But buckle up, let's see what we have against Olasso, and I hope you guys are excited for it. If you are, make sure you go ahead, smack that like button, hit that subscribe button as well if you have to be brand new to the channel. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. And let's see if we can use home field advantage to take down the number four team in the state of Oklahoma. Let's get it. So Owasso decided to defer to the second half. And now we're going to bring our boys out onto the field. Doma's going to get ready to get sent here real fast as we're going to run the ball up the guts for Vita St. Louis, who's nearly going to pick up this first down for us. But he's going to be just one yard shy. So here we go, third and short, and I think what the game plan is for us. We got to get as many methodical drives as possible. We got to shorten out this clock because Olasso is a legit team. They're even better than Stillwater. And y'all remember what happened to us in that Stillwater game. We got down right in Bears. So I like what we're doing right now. We're getting that running game established. And then we're going to set up this play action with Caden Doman. He doesn't have much time, though. Dumps it off to Jake Durant. Who picks up a gain of seven boy did he take a shot but great decision making there by Caden Doman the senior quarterback did not panic and now we're looking at a third and shorts Doman in the shotgun looking to set up the read option we're gonna run it with Vita St. Louis who's out in open space and now we find ourselves in Olasso territory first down gore and we're here we go in Olasso territory we're gonna build off of it and Caden Doman is gonna get out of bounds we're inside the 30 yard line and we're taking a lot of time off the clock as well as we're gonna run it again with Caden Doman who continues to make just excellent decisions this is incredible what we're doing on this first drive as nearly half of the first quarter is gone like, that is one-eighth of the game. That is not going to be getting back. This is exactly how we want it to go. And, hey, maybe we'll get a little bit of Lady Luck. Vita St. Louis had his face mask grabbed. And the officials did catch it. So that means Tyler Rich. That's going to be half the distance to the goal. And we're going to be inside the 15-yard line. A red zone. Opportunity coming. But a critical third and eight on the way. Doman in the shotgun. He's going to drop back the pass. Looks over the middle. Finds Vita St. Louis. Breaks the tackle. And they give us the first down. First down for the Pirates. And just a few yards away from getting the first points of this ball game. Third and goal. Doman drops back. Looks around. He's going to run it himself. And the Pirates will strike first. First drive of the game. And Doman is going to score you will love to see it, and that is exactly how we wanted to play this first quarter. Most of it happening on one drive, and we are up 7-0 against the number four team in the state of Oklahoma. So let's see if we can keep it up here in the second quarter as Olasso, they went free and out. They've only had four total yards 
in this game so far. We have the advantage. As we'll throw over to the left-hand side to begin this second quarter of action. And Jody Gentry will go ahead and pick up the first down for us. His second catch of the day. So let's see if we can build off of that as we'll run the ball with Vita St. Louis. Who follows his blocks yet again. And picks up another gain of seven there. You love to see it. Vita St. Louis doesn't have a high yards per carry average in this one. But every yard has certainly been earned. And Dolman trying to throw to the left-hand side. Contested. Uh, by 25 nice play there over there by 25 in order to force the incompletion won the one-on-one -on -one against our beef wellington and now we'll try to throw again on third down doman looks over left hand side finds jake durant who gets lit up like a christmas tree but still hangs on to it anyways and we have a new set of downs to work with and we're gonna set him up with play action hold up now Dur doman on the run he it's a dot to Jake Durant. Who is this kid? He is not real right now. That is a dot. And we now got a goal line, and we're going to punch it in again. Who are these people, and what happened to the old Gore Pirates? They came out firing on all cylinders. So now Olasu is on the ropes. Down 14 to nothing, and they need a spark drastically. Can they get it from Hills? Who does have the kick return. He's down the sideline. This could be some trouble. And Anthony Hills gets a good return. Able to get all the way to that 40-yard line. So here we go. First and 10 following the big kick return. As Willingham's going to throw over to the left-hand side. To Anthony Hills. Who nearly picks up the first down. He's the same guy that had the long return as well. Mason Willingham and their star tailback Johnson. There to Key Cox to this offense. And it looks like that is going to continue as Mason Willingham using his athleticism to move the sticks for the first time today. That is the first, first down for a lawsuit. And it nearly took a first down to do it. We'll see if it sparks this Owasso Rams team because we certainly brought it. We'll see if they have that same energy. First and 10 coming up here as Willingham in the shotgun. It's going to hand it off to Johnson. And Johnson's going to be brought down in the backfield. A gang of Pirates coming down and making a play. And now it's third and long. We're going to test the arm of Mason Willingham. We'll see if our guys can get home and generate some pressure. As Leahy was surprised that he got out. They tried to set up the screen. And we're able to contain the screen. Savian Simmons. The freshman able to eventually get home, pushing the pile. And that's how we end up bringing him down eventually, just containing everything downfield. So the Owazo Rams are going to have to settle for a field goal. This is a 42-yard kick, so not an easy one by any means. And it's wide left. It's no good. And we'll use this time to get a studio update. This could be a possible state championship game. Bartsville and Stillwater. Well, those two actually met in the regular season. Bartsville won, but Heritage Hall is in some trouble losing to unranked Miami. So this could be a big upset week on our hands. As we'll take over less than two minutes left in the first half as Beef Wellington gets in the space. Gets brought down from behind by number 25. Beef Wellington's first catch goes for 24. And the Pirates are on the move once again. Doman looks over to Beef Wellington's side. Not as far of a gain, but still some good yardage there. He'll pick up a gain of nine. And we'll use that to call a timeout. We still have two timeouts remaining, though. As we'll look over to the left-hand side. Thought about throwing that corner pattern, but instead, Doman's going to scramble. He'll help move the sticks for us. And we're not in any rush. I like how the offense has been performing today, and I want to make sure that, hey, we're the last team to have the ball in this first half. That's a secondary objective. Of course, I also want to score, because eventually, Lasso's offense is going to wake up, right? Like, I am amazed that we have, still have a shutout on our hands this long into the game, but, man, I, this is crazy to see. And this is another crazy throw. Danico Fowler Jr. makes the catch, but that was Doman, a right-handed quarterback, Throwing to his left. That is not an easy throw to make on the run. I mean, Doman's just been on it today. He is on fire. This is like a one in a million type games here. So third and goal coming up. 
We'll see if we can punch it in. We still have our two timeouts. Olasso's been using theirs, however. They want this ball back. And they're going to get it back, all right. But they're going to be down by quite a bit. They're going to be down 21 to nothing before they see this ball yet again. So our team has been playing absolutely fantastic so far. But we might be showing some cracks. We gave him a big return last time out. And then Adams, he's able to get loose again. That nearly gets out to the 35-yard yard line. And now the Rams will take over with good field position again. First and 10 coming up. Willingham drop back. He's going to scramble. Gets out of the pocket. I thought we had really solid contain. But we get him short of the sticks. So they are going to try to go fast. They end up spiking the ball with 17 seconds left. They want to preserve that last time out. So now, third and inches coming up as Willingham directs the tight end. He's going to move him to the right hand side, and Willingham's going to escape once more. He will slide down right in front of our faces. And now we're seeing the Rams on the go. They probably have like two, three shots at most at this end zone. They want to make them count. Willingham again, going to scramble, gets away from Chase Henry. I thought with how that camera moved that we were able to force a fumble, but that just did not happen there. So that will mean that Owasso has to settle for a field goal. This one's from 46 yards out. They missed the last one, but that will barely sneak through as Owasso is on the board. But we also got an update in 4A sectional action. Millwood is up on Cassia Hall. 7 to nothing, but this is the story of the day. Your Gore Pirates with a commanding lead over Lasso, 21 to 3. So let's see if we can continue the intensity here in this second half of action. Here's the thing though, Lasso starts with the ball. So this is a big drive for the Rams to come out on as Willingham gets dropped behind the line of scrimmage. First play of the second half, and it looks like we maintain our intensity. Cairo Cock with the... TFL on that play so now second and 14 coming up as Willingham is going to go ahead he's going to scramble out of this pocket here Willingham down the sideline he's going to be pushed out of bounds eventually by Jared Jackson I'm sorry Miss Jackson but he is for real so now another first and 10 for the Lasso Rams as they'll hand it off simply to Tariq Johnson Tariq Johnson has certainly been maintained in this one only five carries for six yards. He has not been a problem today like I thought he would be. But Mason Willingham, well, he's starting to find a groove. And Mason Willingham, I believe he's in like that upper 90s from an overall standpoint. So I would not be surprised to see him play at the college level. I think he might be a senior as well. Running like a senior as he is going to take that big hit. And he's not going to even flinch. He bounces right back up. He's an extremely tough kid. But now we have him to a third down. We have been doing really well with our third down defense today. We'll see if that continues as Willingham draws back. He's going to put the ball on the ground, but the only offensive lineman pick it up. Oh, we almost got a turnover there. As it looks like that might have been Edwin Waters that got that ball loose. And now Owasso will have to bring their field goal unit out again. Another 45 yarder. He barely makes the last one. And he just sneaks that one through as well. So the field goal attempt is good. And we get another studio update on the break. Miami is still up on Heritage Hall. 17-16. The number 5 team in the state of Oklahoma. Certainly in some deep trouble late in that third quarter. But now we're back from our commercial break. And we get back at it here midway through the third quarter. Doman going to drop back. He faces some pressure and is able to calmly find the senior in Danico Falla for the first down. So now looking at his second and 10 once more. Doman drops back. He's got some time to throw to the right-hand side. And Falla Jr. is going to come down and make this catch. Making it third and long. But we are at least in Lasso territory. Going to try to set up the screen here. And that's nearly intercepted. Beef Wellington just in general did not have anywhere to go. So that will be an empty possession. And now the Rams have a chance to come back and make this a game once again. 
Second and 10 coming up as Willingham drops back to pass. Willingham looks to the right hand side and finds Anthony Hills to get them out of their own territory. They had the shadow of their own goal posts in their backfield. So they have some much needed breathing room. But Adrian Waters is not making anything easy. He's going to deflect that pass away. And now the Rams will need to convert. Yet another third down. Third and six. Willingham drops back. Looks over to the left-hand side. Jackson cannot get there in time. He was trying to guard those deeper rounds. Cole Adams works through Jared Jackson on the tackle. There's a fresh set of downs for the Rams. And they make most, most use of those new set of downs. As I thought Drew Hogan's was going to take that loose there. But it's only a 13-yard gain. We can deal with that. We just got to play bend, but don't break defense. And our defense is surely bending right now. Longham is starting to find big lanes, both through the air and on the ground as well. But this is where we got to make our money. First and 10 coming up for the Rams. Willingham drops back, looks over to the left inside, finds Thomas. But he's able to be wrapped up quickly if he broke that tackle. He might have been off to the races, but that's going to bring an end to the third quarter of action. We're still hanging tough up 21 to 6. Do we have enough in the tank to pull the upset against the number four team in all of Oklahoma? Find out soon. So here we go. Fourth quarter now officially underway as the Rams are in a third and eight. They haven't done much since the curl pattern. Willingham looks over to the left-hand side, gets it out to Drew Hogan, but he can't do anything with it. So now it's going to be a fourth down coming up. It's been a long drive for the Rams. This will be their 13th play. We might see a resolution here, and they're going to try to draw it up the middle. They wanted to get Tyreek Johnson going, and it just has not happened. We have not allowed that to happen today. And so the fourth down is unsuccessful. We will take over and a chance to lay it, put the nail in the coffin. St. Louis looking for a big play. Here's Vita St. Louis with a massive run down the sideline. And it's a 31-yard scamper. His biggest run the entire night. And here comes the Pirates trying to put the nail in the coffin. We're going to dump it off to Jody Gentry. Just nice, safe yardage. Keeps us to have the sticks. Third and four is certainly manageable. In the shotgun is the senior quarterback. We'll see if we go to Beef Lowingham, who's got some time over the left inside, and it's caught. First down for the Pirates. And so, that being said, the drive continues and allows us a chance to get time off the clock. Or we can get big plays like that to Jake Durant. A 17 yard grab. The undersized tight end certainly making a name for himself. So here we are, second and nine now, as Venus St. Louis is going to run it up the gut for a gain of 10. First down for Gore. And now we're looking at first and goal. We're going to put the nail in the coffin. And Danico Fala Jr.'s is wide, but naked open in the end zone. Touchdown, Pirates. Let's go, baby. That is what I'm talking about, man. 28 to 6 is gonna be your score. That should be the nail in the coffin. But this is high school football. We're talking about 15 to 17 year old kids. Anything can happen on any given Friday night. But it, one thing's for certain: Olaso must score on this drive, or else it's gonna be over. So no surprises here. Seeing if them go into their no huddle because they need to get some quick points. And quickly, as Mason Willingham is dropped in the backfield by Eason Wynn, who gets his second sack of the day, man. Let's go. And that clock is starting to tick. Now, well, under four minutes left to play. Willingham trying to scramble again. We almost got another sack, but instead gets out of there as Adrian Waters will have to bring down the senior quarterback. So now, third and four. Coming right up. A critical third down for the Wasso Rams offense. Willingham draws back. Looks to the right hand side and finds Hogan. Even getting out of bounds as well. That will help stop the clock. 
until the ball is officially sent. And it will not take long for the officials to spot the ball at about midfield. Willingham snaps it again with 304, but this time runs into a gang of pirate defenders who simply have nowhere to go. And Adrian Waters will be credited with his second sack of the evening. He's been a problem living in that Lasso backfield as the blitzes have been getting home. But when you blitz as much as we do, we like to take risks. Sometimes it opens things up on the back end, and Jakari Thomas. Well, he exposed us there. Gets out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. As now, Willingham drops back again. Looking for the first down. He's going to get the first down. A little bit more, and look at that animation. Oh, boy, did Willingham get body slammed like he was in WWE. I'm surprised that wasn't considered like a roughing penalty of some sorts. They would call that in today's game, but in 2013 when this game was made... That wasn't a problem at all, and we certainly have no problem with Chase Henry getting to this quarterback. Clock is ticking again, 2.20, left to play in the fourth quarter. Willingham draws back, looks over the middle, finds Drew Hogan in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams! The Rams finally find the end zone. I'm interested to see if they go for the two-point conversion or not. But they actually choose not to do that. Instead, they go for the extra point, and we have a studio update, and this one is a shocker. Heritage Hall is going to fall to Miami, 27-26, and they might not be the only top five team falling tonight. Owasso needs his onside kick, or else it's over, and Danico Fowler Jr. is going to recover. The senior is going to comp help complete the greatest upset of the entire season so far. Number four, Owasso, is going to fall to your Gore Pirates. 28 to 13, and baby, they're storming the fields. So, boys, you want to talk about the biggest win of the season? This was an incredible win. One that I was not sure if we had the capabilities of pulling off, but here we are. We done did it, and... We do it in a surprising way as well. I thought the only way for us to win is if we got into the shootout. But we held a lasso to under 300 yards of total offense. We hold this lasso Rams team, who was number four in the state, by the way, to 13 points. They did not even score a touchdown until late in the fourth quarter. Just incredible stuff by our defense and a big time upset for your Gore Pirates. But digging in more so to the individual statistics and Caden Doman, he had an efficient day today. Caden Doman ends up going 17 for 20, 128 yards and a touchdown. But he also had some help from the running game. Vita St. Louis, he did everything possible to make sure that we got this win. And yes, his yards per carry wasn't great, four yards a carry, but those were hard-earned yards, man. That is a great front seven at Owasso. He had nearly 100 yards and two touchdowns, so he had a fantastic day today. And then Caden Doman was also able to find the end zone on the ground as well. He had 10 carries for 34 yards. Now, for the receivers, we didn't have much diversity in terms of who touched the ball through the air today, but Jake Durant was our leading receiver today. He had five catches for 59 yards on the day. And then it was Danico Fala Jr. who had the only touchdown grab among the receivers. The senior did have four catches for 45 yards. And so did Beef Wellington minus the touchdown grab, of course. But it was truly our defense that ended up shining. We couldn't have done it without our defense, man. They really set us up to be able to play the type of game that we wanted to play. We didn't allow them to dictate how we wanted to play. We made them play our style of, of ball. Jared Jackson and Brandon Berry both led the team in tackles today. They had eight tackles apiece. With Adrian Waters getting involved as well, he had six total tackles on the day. And while we didn't force any turnovers, we did force a fumble in this game. Both Eason Lynn and Adrian Waters had multiple sacks in this game. The same could be said for Savian Simmons and Chase Henry as well. Both who are just true freshmen. 
making impacts. These are 15 year olds playing varsity. Usually don't see that kind of impact. Also shout out to Adrian Waters for forcing that fumble as well. You love to see it. So the significance of us when getting that big time win was that that was also going to be our final home game of the year. We only have two games left here in the season and then we move on to the off season and those two games are going to be on the road. One of which actually both of them are going against very good teams. Washington is one of those teams. They were a preseason top 25 team and while they disappointed this year, they are still a good squad. We just have to make sure that we can get up for this game. If we played like we did against Owasso tonight, we can beat anybody in the state of Oklahoma and then some. But we are capable of losing games as well. That's why we are still just 6-4 and four to our name. So, next episode, we will have the Washington game. And depending on what happens in the Washington game, if it ends up in a blowout, we'll finish the regular season in the next episode as well. But this was a big time win for our program, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have, like I certainly did, make sure you go ahead, smack that like button, hit that subscribe button as well if you have to be brand new to the channel. This is John J. Gaming on the mic signing off. Hoping you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.